The title of this book is taken from a letter that I found in the National Archives and it was written by George Gavin Duffy and he was Minister for Foreign Affairs in early 1922. So that transition period between the signing of the Anglo-Irish Treaty at the end of 1921 and the formation of a provisional government to implement the treaty in early 1922. And he's very worried. And what George Gavin Duffy says in this particular letter is that there is an onus on both sides to prevent the outbreak of civil war. And he makes the point as Minister for Foreign Affairs that we have to prove to the rest of the world that we can manage this crisis or else we will be seen as a rabble. And it was a phrase and a description that really stuck with me because uh, it, it, it was illustrative of the great fears and tensions that were there about you know, the degeneracy into civil war. But also it made me think, what did he mean by rabble? Who are the rabble? Where are the rabble? So a lot of the research I've been doing since has been about trying to look at that idea of the rabble, the ordinary people. There's a very strong sense of a generational change. This is overwhelmingly a revolution of the young. It's young men and women who are doing the fighting. It's young men and women who are pushing a new political agenda. They're rejecting uh, an older tradition of Irish nationalism. So they do see themselves as representing something new, something different, uh, and representing a, a younger generation. So in that sense, they felt the time was ripe to strike. That didn't mean at the outset that they had anything like overwhelming support. They certainly didn't. Uh, and momentous events like the 1916 Rising are obviously not events that at the time, at the beginning, uh, have any kind of popularity. There were only 700,000 people could vote in Ireland before 1918. That changes to nearly 2 million by the end of 1918. So a lot of people are getting to vote for the first time. Women over the age of 30 are getting to vote for the first time. So they can claim, Sinn Féin and the Republican movement can claim by the end of 1918 and that momentous general election of 1918 that they have a mandate, but there's still a degree of ambiguity about what that mandate is. Did people mandate violence? These are the big questions that go to the heart of trying to excavate that revolutionary period. What did people feel was legitimate? Uh, and there was a traditional narrative of the revolution that the, the rebels came through the conflict with immaculate hands. We have much more of an appreciation now uh, of, of how fallacious that contention is and how hollow it is in any war. People don't come through war with immaculate hands. And we have much more of a sense of the, of, of the impact of intimate local killings, people who knew each other, people who turned on each other, or those who are caught up as civilians uh, and those who have to pay the ultimate price, uh, even though they had no choice over that. There's a number of different aspects to remembrance and commemoration and memory, which are very much coming into the frame now. You know, the state does need to take an active role in the commemoration of this period and can't expect to be neutral about its own origins as a state. And then there are all those whose political parties come out of this period and they have their own priorities and sometimes they have their own ways of, of hijacking and distorting the reality of what happened in order to fulfil their own contemporary needs. That's the nature of commemoration and it's not just an Irish question, it goes on everywhere. There's an awful lot that can be done to do this in a dignified way and to ensure that there is dignity and that there is respect for different traditions and for different voices. But at the same time, you can't be neutral when it comes to uh, the state. You know, you have to acknowledge that this period of history was about division, was about conflict, was about death. It's not unreasonable for a state to want to commemorate and celebrate perhaps the coming into existence of the state. It's not unreasonable for them to want to do that. The question and the challenge is whether they can do that with dignity.